we're obviously only a few days removed from one of the bigger fights, I assume, of your career here in Madison Square Garden. So what are the emotions now that the hard part of fight camp is, is in the, in behind you and now it's just cutting weight in media? It's a relief. Um, I'm excited to fight, definitely eager to fight. Um, I mean, this is my dream. Like, I, uh, you know, I prayed to fight here. I prayed for the day that I'd be able to fight at MSG. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the epicenter. New York's the epicenter of the world. And, um, you know, I had, I had been to the fights here. I, I was at uh, Garbrandt Dillashaw. And, man, the place is electric. It gets crazy. And I, I've always dreamed of, of fighting here. Well, Julio Arce was in here, and, and Michael Chandler. They had obviously had multiple fights in this venue, and they said it just feels differently because the place shakes and the crowd is just. It, it, Michael Chandler's phrase was, "It makes you want to fight a specific way." So, have you like mentally prepared at all for just like how loud and just chaotic will be in there when you fight? So, like, I try to like visualize it, but I, I mean, I don't think you can ever really prepare. You know, you can try, but yeah. So, um, yeah, man, like when, when. Uh, so Garbrandt dropped TJ at the end of the first, and then everyone was chanting. It was just like insane. And then TJ came out and dropped, and like that place went crazy. And that, yeah, it was so. I just can't explain it, man. Like the place was so electric. Like the arena was so crazy. So I, I, that's what I want. You know what I mean? Like that's really I want those moments. Like that's why I got into fighting. Then you're obviously following Wellington Terman here. Uh, what, when that name came across, were you excited about that matchup, or was it just I want to fight at MSG? I'll fight whoever. I yeah, I as long as MSG, that's that's what I wanted. You know, I've been I asked for that, and uh, you know I sacrificed a lot. I've really wanted to be on this card. And we've always heard of between wrestlers and jujitsu practitioners, there's some sort of like unspoken rivalry between two grappling bases. How how accurate is that between wrestling and jujitsu players? <clears throat> like for the contest to see who the best grapplers are, yeah. I mean, I think the wrestlers usually win that. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty fair to say. And then in your last fight, you 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 made it a point of pride at the end when you finished Nick. Like I finished him on the ground where he said he shown I out grappled him. Is that still the game plan against Wellington, who does have a, a high level of black? He has a black belt. Like, do you want to test yourself? Like, yeah, I just yeah. want to keep making the same argument. Like, I'm the best scrappler in this division, and I'm going to go out and continuously prove it, you know? I, I showed it with Maximov. Uh, I showed it with the Anders grappling match. Like, I'm just going to continue to go out and show it. And another Brazilian black belt is, is another notch on my belt. And unrelated to this fight, uh, I've been asking everyone in media day this. This might be Frankie Edgar's last fight in his MMA career. So were you a fan of his coming up? Did you have any favorite memories of Frankie? I mean, come on. How could you not be a fan of Frankie Edgar? Uh, it's crazy, like, just seeing him, like, he was the champ at 55, like, and now he's at 35. It's just crazy. But, yeah, um, I, I, at some, I, w I went up to Catones to, to spar a little bit for this camp. So, you know, I had ran into him, and I just – I'm a big fan. So, yeah. And finally, uh, do you have a prediction for the main event, how you see that playing out? <laughs> uh, I, th I think Adesanya can pull it off. Andre, over here in the middle. Um, you've won three fights in a row. Uh, well, three fights in the UFC. you got all wins by stoppage. Like, how far do you think to a ranked opponent? Um, if not next, you know, the one after. Yeah. I, I would say we're a fight or two away. Yeah, uh, talk to me about your team for a second. Uh, Henzo Gracie Philly, Daniel Gracie Philly. I mean, it's like the hottest team going right now. I mean, I know you. Got, if I say what's the reason for success, you're gonna say hard work, but there's, there's got to be something else. Like, what's going on over there? Yeah, I think um, it's for the first time. Like, um, people are coming to Philly to, to train to pursue a career in martial arts. You know, in the past, you know, Eddie Alvarez and Paul Felder, like those guys paved the way, but they all kind of left. You know, um, Paul went to. Rufus Sport in Milwaukee, and, and Eddie went down to Florida. Like, these guys had to leave their families and, and go relocate. But for the first time, we're seeing, like, you know, guys like are like, oh, I don't have to leave my family. Like, I can stay in Philly and then be with my family and train and, and get the work that's needed. So just I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that first wave of Philly fighters that are staying and being like, no, this is my home. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to build here. You know, I'm going to build a legacy here in my town where there's so much history of good fighters. How about a prediction for your own fight? Uh, I have a 100% finish rate for a reason, and I look to continue it. Good luck to you. Yeah. Andre, in the back middle yeah. here. 
um, including grappling, uh, mixing up grappling and MMA, your last five fights, including this one, was MMA, grappling, MMA, grappling, back to MMA now. Uh, do you have to change your tr like whole training regimen to, to flip between two different sports here, or do you kind of just keep it consistent? Yeah, I mean, grappling's a little bit more um, lackadaisical, I guess. You know, I'm not, like, killing myself to get ready for a grappling match. It's fun, you know. I get to focus on um, working on new things and just getting better and, and enjoying the process, whereas a fight is like, you know, we're going there to fight. I'm going there to kill someone. So uh, it's a little bit of a different mindset, but it's competition. Thank you. Andre, one more. Uh, yes, sir. How, how intrigued are you by the addition of Bo Nickel to this division? You said you, were, you consider yourself the best grappler, and a lot of people think you yeah. can already compete in the top ten. <laughs> I mean, I've called him out so many times. Uh, we tried to get him twice. I, I never, I mean, I didn't expect him to fight me, but I thought that he would at least grapple me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I have a lot more experience in martial arts than, than he does. So, but, you know, if, if he's going to sit there and say, oh, I'm the best, there's no, no one has 10% of my, gra like, all right, then show it. Like, grapple me then. Like, so I continue to call him out, and he just continues to say no. So, yeah, at this point, it, it is what it is, you know. Do you think that's a fight that eventually, like maybe not now, but down the road, you could build that up to just be a bigger deal than it is if you had fought? Hundred percent, hundred percent. As I continue to prove my argument that I'm the best grappler, he's not going to be able to deny it anymore, or else he's going to have to shut up and be like, "All right, I can't, I can't say this shit no more. Can't speak, stand up here and speak fucking gibberish."